we're going right back to basics today with tables in Excel. Understanding tables is foundational to good analysis in Excel, and it can also help you on your Power BI journey. So let's go. I'm still coming across people on my training courses that are new to tables. They've never heard of them, they tried them and didn't like them. So I'm doing this video more for my benefit so that I can point people towards it and say, hey, go take a look at this. This is a foundational concept of building decent reports in Excel. So this is what tables are. I've got a, a list of data or a, a little block of data. And if I click on it, I can say Control T and it asks me to create a table. Now, if you don't remember the shortcut Control T, it's on the Home tab. It says Format as Table. And if you forget that one, then it says Insert Table. And when you hover over it, it says Control T. But Control T for Table is an easy thing to remember. Control T. OK, my table has headers. Yes, it does. The word date. And there we have a nicely formatted table. Now, even something simple like inserting a row, the colors change. You don't have to redo the coloring like you did with the old conditional formatting and or manually having to change colors. Something simple like that. Beautiful. But the real power of tables is the fact that they auto expand and formulas automatically fill down. Let me show you what I mean. If I want to do month uh, number, okay, in here, just make this a little bit wider, equals month, and I click on a cell. Firstly, it says at date, which means this row and the date column, and then I press enter, and the whole formula spills down. And if I want to format the entire column, I can either click on the column here and do my formatting, or click in any cell and do control space bar, and that highlights every column. Then I'm just going to go home and format it with a number, with a comma there. So we've got ones, twos, etc. And it gets wider. So if I do a month name, okay, just double click here, equals text, this value, and in the format, MMM. And it fills down. All the rows get filled, which is beautiful. And if I wanted to do something here, if I do a formula halfway down equals year, and I click on this, it auto fills. And this is beautiful. They are all consistent formulas all the way down. Now, admittedly, the format, these at date and these square brackets can look a bit scary, but really it's a much more meaningful formula than the E5 reference that it might otherwise be. It's telling you it's at date. So these tables, they are a really fantastic thing. You can navigate round them with control full stop if you like. It takes you around the four corners. So control full stop. And I'm instantly down at the bottom. And the really nice thing about tables is that if I was to add one more date, so let's type in the 9th of June, say, and press enter, everything fills down automatically. Or if I were to insert a row, see the formulas have automatically filled in? That's the key to tables, okay? Consistency in your formulas, automatically filling in. It's a really powerful thing. And check out my headings. Look at my headings. I can always see what my headings are. If I click away, they've gone. If I click back in my table, you can always see, and the filters are even there as well, which is another beautiful thing about tables. Okay, if I jump back up the top, as soon as you move down and your headings disappear, you can see your headings. Within your table, you really should go to table design and you should name your tables. TBL is what I call my tables. TBL data or TB, sorry, TBL data or dates in this case or something like that. You know, keep it consistent, use a consistent naming convention. 
that'll do. Okay, and if I then want to write formulas and things, I can reference that table name. The other options within here are pivot tables, which we'll have a look at in a second, removing duplicates. If you don't want it to be a table for some reason anymore, click convert to range. Um, insert slices, so I can click on a slicer, say give me the month name. And here we've got a filter, so I can just filter for February or just for May. Okay, we can add stuff like that. And there's other formatting options and bits and pieces within the table design menu here. Adding up all the numbers in a table, I'll show you that next, but you can do other little calculations and things as well. But that's the intro. So next best thing about tables, formulas love tables. So here we have a table, I've named it rate table. Um, if I wanna simply add up a column, I can go to the table design and turn on the total row. There's a total automatically gets put into the end one, but you can click on the drop down and say count or max or sum. There we go, a simple sum. You could even copy and paste that and put that at the top if you wanted to. Okay, and you can turn it off when you're done with it. You've also got the ability to turn off banded rows or turn them on, etc. Okay, but let's say you're doing something like an X lookup formula. So equals X lookup. I'm looking at value C and I'm highlighting this column. So I just hover my mouse above it and click. Okay, and you've actually got the name. It's no, you know you're looking in the item column. And I wanna bring back the rate. So I, again, I do a comma and I click on the rate column just with my mouse hovered above it. And there we go, rate table rate, and that's it. I can now press enter and I get my percentage. And you can even tweak your formula to say, actually, I don't want the rate anymore. I want to bring back, um, and you start typing the column name, value two, enter. And now that's looking up value two. Okay, and if I change that to 90, you'll see that that's looking up for item C. It's so good, okay? If you wanna do a sum equals sum, I could start typing rate, there we go, rate table, open the square brackets, select value three, close the square bracket, close the round, done. This is very much starting to look like DAX formulas then, because you refer to tables and columns. It's really good. Pivot tables love tables. So if you have some data and you summarize it with a pivot table, okay, and I'll just put it on the existing worksheet just right next to it so we can see this in action. Let me go here, click OK and I'll just put value in the values and color in the rows, okay? Now, because it auto expands, if I add another item in here, when I refresh my pivot table, it will pick up that new data. So right click, refresh, and there we go. The blue item is showing up. Whereas if you don't have your data in a table, you have to go to your table, you have to say pivot table analyze, change data source, resize it. So it's safer if you refer to a table. Another good use of tables is for drop down lists, as because tables expand, the drop down list picks up those new values. Now, I'll put a link to a video I've done on this because there are some traps and techniques and things you need to be aware of. So the link will pop up and there'll be a link in the notes. But here's the basics. If I click inside a list and do control T and then say my table has headers and click OK, then here's my table. Now I'm gonna name my table and I've actually got my table name box just here in my quick access toolbar. And to get that name there, what I've done is I've gone to my table design and simply right click over here and say add to the quick access toolbar. And having this here allows me to quickly name my tables and see what a table is called when I click on it. So TBL um, drop down. So there we go. And now, unfortunately, you can't refer to a table name in a drop down list, which is really annoying. But 
it's always good to name your tables anyway. But if I go to data, click on my data validation button and say list, and my source becomes these three cells, okay, and I click OK, then here's my list with A, B, and C. But because it's a table, when I add new items, they automatically get picked up. But please check out that video I mentioned. The link will be in the descriptions below. And then finally, the one that catches people out with tables is the fixed reference. So if I want to do a quick fixed reference, I am going to do something like this. I want to take that percentage at rate, multiply it by the 10, okay, and I press enter and it fills down. Beautiful, okay, so that's rate times the 10, rate times the 10. But then if I drag this across, ah, okay, it's now doing 10 times 40. I want to do 10% times 40. I want to lock that first calculation, that first column in. But unlike normal Excel, you can't do the dollar signs in a table. You can't do the F4 key to lock in the dollars. So my little technique is I click in here, do a semicolon after the word rate, and then I highlight the column and then press enter. It actually fills in the full table name for you. But now when you drag this across, okay, you can see it's actually locking it into that column. And then you highlight these, double click, and down they go. So tables, Power Query loves them. If you pull this table, right click, get data from table. If you pull some data into Power Query, it often converts it into a table, unless it's already a named range. You can grab this data, you can just load the column you want. Let's remove other columns. Um, and let's close and load this to, and we'll load it to a table in a new worksheet. Okay, and here's my data in another column, but as a table. So tables are everywhere. And if you do tap into another data source using Power BI, and you've actually got an Excel table, it's got its name, it's distinct. It can move anywhere on the sheet and your Power Query won't break. Tables are just good for so many reasons. So I hope that brief introduction to tables gives you a good sense of what they're for, why they're good, and why you should use them. So I hope you liked it. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. This has been a bit of a series of um, videos that I've done about Power Query, Power BI, DAX, just the basics that people need to know about getting started with data analysis. Hope you find it useful. Catch you later.